reported, we're following the very latest out of Israel. New breaking news overnight. We're being told airstrikes hit a southern Gaza Strip city, killing many, according to a Gaza Health Ministry report. Gaza's health ministry, which is run by Hamas, saying that two new airstrikes have killed 18 people in Rafah. We'll have more on this story with an expert in just a moment. We're also following the very latest of that foreign aid package. Right now, I want to give you a live look out in Washington, D.C. Very cloudy and overcast conditions this morning. You see the U.S. Capitol there. The White House very pleased Saturday with the House's passage of a series of foreign aid bills, including a new round of military assistance to Ukraine. We'll have updates on this story as well. And we're also keeping a close eye on breaking news out of Memphis, Tennessee. This coming into our live now from Fox Studios overnight. Keeping a close eye on this breaking news. We're told eight people were shot, two killed. We'll have the latest information from the Memphis Police Department later this morning. Right now, we're going to turn to our top story this morning. Again, we are following breaking news here on Live Now from Fox. New from overnight, airstrikes hit a southern Gaza Strip city, killing many, according to a Gaza Health Ministry report. Gaza's health ministry, which is run by Hamas, says that two new airstrikes have killed 18 people in Rafah. One strike killed a man, his wife, and a three-year-old child, according to Kuwait Hospital in Gaza. A second strike killed 13 children and two women, all from the same family, according to hospital records. Israel is continuing near-daily airstrikes on Rafah amid international calls for restraint. Also last night, we know the U.S. approved that $26 billion for Israel as part of a new foreign aid package that also includes $9 billion in humanitarian aid for Gaza. Joining us live this morning to share the very latest and explain the very latest on this breaking news, Mr. Ken Gray, Senior Lecturer in Homeland Security and Criminal Justice at the University of New Haven. Good morning to you, Mr. Ken. Thank you for being here. Good morning, Janae. Glad to be with you again. Glad to have you here. We are following this breaking news overnight. The Gaza Health Ministry saying that Israeli airstrikes killed at least 18 people in Rafah. Could you catch us up, please? Sure. So the tragic event. Um, so as our attention has been focused on the uh, retaliation uh, against Israel by Iran and now Israel's retaliation against the retaliation, the IDF is continuing to pursue their uh, uh, attempt to rid uh, the Gaza Strip of Hamas, and that is focused now on the southern part of the Gaza Strip down uh, in Rafah. Rafah has 1.2 million Palestinians huddled there against the gates uh, uh, into uh, Egypt, and uh, this is where you have women, children, uh, and non-Hamas members, as well as some Hamas members that are hiding there. And so the airstrikes by IDF is in preparation for their plans to actually enter Rafah and to try to separate Hamas from non-Hamas. That is going to be an extremely difficult task. The United States has pushed back against these plans, as well as has leaders of various countries. The president of Egypt, uh, al-Sisi, the president of uh, France, Macron, and the uh, king of Jordan, Abdullah II, they have all signed a letter trying to urge Israel not to enter into Rafah to come up with another plan. And so uh, this is where we face this constant bombardment now of uh, the outer skirts of Rafah is in preparation for the IDF's plan to enter it. Their plan is going to be a two-phase uh, uh, operation. They're going to enter the area, try to separate um, Hamas from non-Hamas, and then s establish a collection point on the outside of Rafah to move the Palestinians that are not Hamas out of the area so that they can engage Hamas. Doesn't sound like a very good plan to me. Sounds like a, a plan that is fraught with danger to the Palestinians. There's a, a, the Palestinians are being used as a human shield for Hamas.
I'm so glad you said that it actually segues into my next question with the controversy surrounding that. We know so many Palestinian people fled to Rafah thinking that was going to be a, quote, safe zone during this fighting. And we've seen how um, the Israeli military, the IDF, has gone in and out of that area because, as you just mentioned, Hamas has been in these underground tunnels and hospitals and schools, um, hiding out and even taking people as hostages. I want to ask you, when it comes to that humanitarian humanitarian aid conflict. How will this pan out? Because this region continues to be bombarded with fighting. It seems at this point there's literally nowhere in this territory that's safe. You're absolutely right that you'll recall that when the, the October 7th push by Israel after the attack on Israel, they first uh, attacked Gaza City. Then after they you know, continue, uh, finish their fighting in there, which still, by the way, is go ongoing to an extent, they then move down to Khan Yunus, which is central part of the Gaza Strip. They have finished in Ga uh, Khan Yunus, and now they're focused down on Rafah. As you say, there is no other place for the Palestinians to go. Consequently, this plan of setting up a collection zone and moving Palestinians to the collection zone to be able to then uh, rid the area of Hamas. But as I say, that's going to be very, very difficult. Uh, and so uh, the the likelihood of the Palestinian death toll to increase is very high. And that's why there's so much opposition to this plan of the IDF to move in there. But Prime Minister Netanyahu is really uh, trapped between two different forces here. His party's uh, control of Israel depends upon the backing of the uh, the far right and the ultra nationalists and both so of those sides are pushing him to to fight harder against Hamas and to rid the area of Hamas and to neglect the uh, hostage situation to put make that a secondary issue the other side though are the Israelis who want him to focus in on a ceasefire and the release of the uh, the remaining hostages Netanyahu has to be able to balance both of those sides. And so far, he's been fighting a losing battle on the hostage side and is instead backing the, the push towards entering Rafa. So I'm afraid that we're going to see over the next weeks to come this move into Rafa, and that does not bode well for the Palestinians. Mr. Ken, I actually found a new camera. My producer, Julianne, just putting that in. You can see Rafa there on your screen. Literally tents that people have um, put up to house their families, to kind of create a new community in the midst of this hostility. And I want to ask you, you know, that foreign aid package passed yesterday, and part of that is humanitarian aid for Gaza. But with all of the fighting and conflict out here, how can that aid be given safely? As you remember, um, that one organization that was feeding people in this area, the, uh, some of those members were killed in an airstrike. So it just paints a bigger picture of, yes, they need the aid, but how can we get it to them safely? There are truckloads of, of goods waiting to come into the Gaza Strip, and uh, those, those truckloads have been having problems getting into the Gaza Strip, although uh, right before the retaliation, uh, they had increased the supplies going into the Gaza Strip. Uh, the, the largest number of trucks since October 7th occurred uh, a week ago of uh, 438, I think it was, trucks uh, entering into the Gaza Strip with food uh, supplies in it uh, last week. But here's the thing, is that there is no security inside the Gaza Strip for those food trucks, for those, that humanitarian aid once it enters into uh, Gaza. And consequently, Hamas is uh, taking some of that. Some of that is being pilfered before it gets to the distribution centers. And so uh, uh, this has been a breakdown, not of providing supplies, not providing humanitarian aid. The real breakdown is being able to move it into Gaza and to distribute it. As you say, the, uh, the uh, uh, aid workers that were for the World Central Kitchen that were killed really caused a lot of those groups to pull out of the Gaza Strip. And so uh, it is difficult to deliver supplies and to distribute supplies there in Gaza at this point. The, the 1.2 million Gaza, uh, Palestinians that are huddled down there at the southern end are there because Israel told them to go there. The IDF told them that that was a safe haven. It's not gonna be safe much longer.
Mr. Ken, you know, I always appreciate your dialogue and expertise. And you were talking about a breakdown. Some would also say there's a breakdown in communication as it relates to the Israeli government and the allies. It seems at this point Netanyahu and his cabinet are pretty much ignoring uh, the U.S. warnings to stop the fighting. And then we're looking ahead to Passover, which is tomorrow. People were hoping that there would be more updates related to those hostages in Hamas captivity and maybe even a ceasefire fire, but it seems like uh, those talks are still out in Egypt. Yeah, I I think that the Passover starts tomorrow evening and it goes to the 30th, and I don't think that the fighting will stop in uh, Rafa and around Rafa due to Passover. So I think that we're going to see a continuation of this push into Rafa, despite the warnings by the United States, France, Egypt, Jordan. I They, uh, they are still insisting on uh, going in there. And again, it's because of the pressure from the the, the right, the ultra-right, and the uh, ultra-nationalists there in Israel. Otherwise, uh, the prime minister's coalition that he has put together will fail, and uh, they will have to call for a new government. So Netanyahu is more or less putting his uh, foot on the pedal uh, and continuing and accelerating activity there uh, around Rafa. Uh, because of politics more than anything else. Mr. Ken, as you keep us informed on the latest with the conflicts in the Middle East, we know uh, it's not only Israel and Hamas, it's Israel and Iran, also the conflict out in uh, Damascus, the conflict in the Red Sea. Do you have any updates on either of those fronts? So uh, Hezbollah uh, has been exchanging uh, uh, fire with uh, Israel, um, and uh, that's been ongoing. Um, there was an attack on uh, a, a um, in, um, Iraqi base that had uh, Iranian uh, men in it, uh, and so the areas around Israel there that are part of this axis of resistance continues to be uh, hot spots in the area and threatening to bubble over into a regional conflict. But I think the the uh, with the uh, retaliation threats. Now behind us, uh, the the attacks on one another being behind us, I think we are, can take a little bit of a sigh of relief about the possibility of a regional conflict at this point, uh, for at least for the moment. Mr. Ken, thank you again for joining us this morning on Live Now from Fox. We don't take you for granted. We thoroughly appreciate your candidness and expertise as we continue to follow all of these conflicts in the Middle East. You enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Janae. Thank you so much.